to do a program of music that's published here by Forsyth Street. They have a very distinguished history of publishing, particularly the members of the Frankfurt group who were taught by Ivan Law in Frankfurt. They published Balfour Gardner, Cyril Scott, Norman O'Neill, and Roger Quilter. Uh, there might have been another one, uh, but I don't know whether he was called. <laughs> now, it's all very fascinating, and something ought to do some research, because all these people would have been introduced by Robin Legg, the music critic, who was not a director here, but he was very closely involved. He died as long ago as 1933, and he studied music in Frankfurt too, so that is how it came. It continued after that because the firm published Bantock, Robin Milford, the early William Alwyn, believe it or not, Coleridge Taylor, you'll hear a bit of that tonight, Delius, and again there were Manchester connections with Delius as you know, Pitfield and Ruth Gipps. They actually published Ruth Gipps' first piece. I think they paid about eight pounds. Anyway, she was about eight when she wrote it. And it was broadcast recently, so I hope they get some royalties for the one minute that it is. And of course, they're better known for Walter Carroll and Dorothy Pilling, and they did Charles Hallis editions of the classics. So it's a very distinguished uh, roster of music. And I keep coming across things that I didn't know about. There was one by some Italian composer, a mass. I don't know whether they knew they did it. Anyway, there we go. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's a programme of music for soprano, uh, recorder and piano. And we're going to start with some songs by Tom Pitfield, who I think quite a lot of you knew, and who was absolutely wonderful. Okay, thank you. Birds about the morning hair scorned on 
which of course is uh, very relevant at the moment. We have a composer here. Do you want to say a word or two? Okay, so I'll do it from here. You can hear me, can't you? Hi, uh, John commissioned this from me. Um, uh, the, the idea is that each movement, I need to remind myself what they are, uh, portrays <laughs> different uh, members of the royal family. Uh, the first one, the family gathers, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, perhaps uh, Her Majesty herself take, takes the centre stage. Grandma hankers for the past, uh, that's Prince Charles, uh, with his perhaps conservative taste in music, musical though he is. Um, a Graceful Beauty is actually about Kate. Um, Megan's come onto the scene and left it royally since I wrote this piece. <laughs> um, and then uh, an integrate grandpa, uh, rather poignantly, um, Prince Philip was still alive when I wrote it, uh, and of course he passed away almost a year to the day, I think. And then Rock and Tuddle in the nursery um, is the little ones, uh, I think it's self explanatory. Not a complicated music style. Um, I have some CDs of the orchestral version. Uh, if you're nice to me, I'll give you one at the end. <laughs> <laughs>
did say to Prince Charles Head that he didn't object. <laughs> Duke of Edinburgh was not terribly well, and it's marked Poco Arbitico. So I could be saying it sufficiently.
particularly nice that we do seascapes, which was one of Alwyn's last works, since Forsyth published two of his very first works. I had to work rather hard for this. I went to see him in his house in Blythburgh. It was all rather embarrassing, actually. I was introduced by Tom Hitfield, and he was very taciturn. His wife was as well. She's actually rather better known than he is now, because she's a woman, a composer. And there were portraits all around the walls of naked ladies. Well, I'd never met this man before in my life. And I thought, you know, I can't really say what nice pictures they are. <laughs> so I, after we'd had several mouthfuls of scone, digested rather badly actually, we went into his studio and he showed me his sketchbook. And it, it was his current sketchbook. And it was page after page of naked ladies. Sometimes it was two naked ladies <laughs> tweaking each other's nipples. Now, I've never met this man before in my life. I just didn't know what to say. In the middle of the book, there was one sketch, which is now in my music room, of the Golden Dragon Chinese restaurant in Epsom. And the only thing he said while I went over all these pages and pages of news was, my wife has gone to have her hair done. Well, I, at the end, I said, I hope you don't mind. I'm not crude, but I'd quite like the one of the Golden Dragon Chinese restaurant. I'm like, before, rather than the news. And he sold it me for a nominal sum. I played once or twice in James in Little Italy above this Alderton Festival. Now this Alderton is not far away uh, from Exmouth, and I thought, I'll go and have a look if the Golden Dragon Chinese restaurant is still there. And if there's a hair in the store, of course. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I went to it, and it's got a plaque on it. It was the assembly rooms at which Liszt performed on the way to Ireland. So if you see, <laughs> that's why he did it. We should tell you the time. <laughs> <laughs>
John Gollum, of course, used to be on the staff here for a while. I never judge a book by its cover, but I've always loved the Forsyth's covers to these song cycles. They're just so ornate and pretty. And if they've got recorder in, they've got recorder in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but thought you should know. Thank you. 
which some of you of a certain age may remember. It's the Edgeley Tram. And this was written by Peter Hope as a short uh, present to the Stockport Recorder College on its 50th anniversary, about three years ago. Thank you. 